Hey, yeah, happy new year, coach. Hey, um, the news with um Alex Mack yesterday, you know, possibly uh, you know, could you just update us? I mean, we kind of figured he's out and uh, you know, won't play his last game here with the Falcons. Yeah, he's uh he's definitely out for the uh with the COVID issue. Um obviously he won't be in the building today. And obviously you gotta go through all the procedures and what's going on with the COVID stuff and everything that happens with that. He's on the COVID list. You know, um, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen as far as being the last game with the Falcons. Nobody knows that, but uh, we'll get a chance to figure that out and get a chance to feel it all out as we go. Um, a great opportunity again for Hennessy and for him to step up and to fill in that role, which uh, he's had great leadership all year and how to do it. So we feel a lot really confident with those guys and the ability to do those things. Yeah, and is it kind of fitting? I mean, you know, just the season, just y'all in, y'all out. It's just been y'all a roller coaster ride to to see it uh, kind of, you know, in in this kind of a manner. Just what you have to deal with. You got to be adaptive. You got to be decisive. And we've done a nice job of uh, really dealing with all those things. You know, you got to be able to adapt on what happens throughout the day. Uh, myself, Marty, Rich McKay have been able to be decisive on whether we're in the building, who's out the building, mm -hmm. um, in order to get the game played, in order to get us to the game, uh, to make those decisions has been nice all year. And um, yesterday was just an example of it again. Thank you. Will? Hey, Coach. Happy New Year. Um, Happy New Year, Will. You, you've you talked uh, in the past, you know, about the lessons that you learned the first time around as a head coach from Tampa Bay. And I'm just curious, you know, this year, this experience, are there any new lessons that maybe you've learned? You know, it was uh, definitely, you know, it's certainly been um, challenging, but certainly with the whole, you know, COVID situation and uh, the virtual meetings, the teams, the team works, the voiceovers, the, uh, the uh, everything that's established with the plan and how you want to use things and how people learn, how people learn better. Uh, may have found some new new ways just moving forward, no matter what happens in 2021. Um, you know, how we move forward as far as coaching and giving people information and communicating with guys. It's just all the different techniques, all the different lessons that you learn from that has been awesome for us. Um, I think our guys really appreciate how we've been able to move through all this stuff and be able to get them the information. And I really think they like some of the things, you know, this this is an iPad, iPhone generation. And these guys are really, they're well, they're well equipped to use them. Um, our coaches have all, all been really adapted well and been, been able to go back and be able to give those guys information that way. So it's really worked out well for us. And yesterday, um, you know, Coach Holbrook advocated for you to get another shot in the in the lead role in the league, you know, whether it's here or somewhere else. I'm curious, your relationship with him and the dynamic between you, know, you in, in the head coach role and him as defense coordinator, how much flexibility has he had to implement some of his visions on defense? Or do you guys really work together to, to make it more of a mutual process? You know, I signed uh, Jeff Holbrook yesterday as my agent. Um, he's done a... <laughs> He's done a great job of really endorsing me and like just support me throughout the whole process. I mean, Brick is not only a great coach, he's one of my better friends in life. Um, Brick is one of the guys who can absolutely, um, you know, put his his stamp on whatever he's going to do. Um, we love to talk about everything. We love to communicate everything. But um, his stamp is all over uh, me as a person, uh, me as a coach, our team, all of us and just in general. So the things that he brings to the team, you can't even quantify in wins and losses. You can only quantify it about the guys and how they love and how much he invests into these guys and becoming their confident. Awesome. Thank you. Jason? Hey, Coach. Happy New Year as well. Thank um, you, Jason. Yeah. Look, you know, looking back this season, uh, how would you guys feel you managed Todd's workload at running back and um, just with everything, obviously, that has transpired over the last uh, four or five weeks? You know, uh, you know, you're really talking about Todd and what he's transitioned to for us. And his mm -hmm. role has been our backed up runner, a third down runner, a red zone runner. And you really have to say it's been really successful within the last couple of weeks, especially last week. I had to give him a lot of praise. We had a couple backed up situations and Todd absolutely lowered his pads and got his five ugly yards, six ugly yards. He was able to get up out of those situations and we were able to get a pass off into the flat to Keith a couple of times to move the chains, to flip the field, to keep you in those type of games. And not always when you're particularly in a position that a guy like Todd Gurley is in, um, you're not going to always like your role and you don't have to like it. You just got to execute it. And what he's been able to do the last couple of weeks is go out and execute his role at the high level. And those are the things you got to ask your team to do when you're talking about winning football and trying to win football games. And the only thing he can do right now is the role he's been given, go out and execute it. And he's done a great job for that for the last couple of weeks. You know, do you think he still has the ability in the NFL to be a, a lead back like he was you know, previous in previous years. I do notice, Jason, 
you never tell a great athlete what they can't do. You know, those guys' mindsets, their mentality, um, the way they approach the game is completely different than these normal humans that are like us that walk around every day. You know, those guys can do whatever they put their mind to. Those guys can go out there and execute whatever they need to get done when they need to get it done. And he certainly falls into that category. And he's a guy that can get whatever he needs to get done uh, when he needs to do it. And I got a lot of faith in him that he can do it if he wants to. Dila, do you have any follow-ups? Uh, yeah, Coach, just uh, a little bit on the game there. Um, you know, uh, tell the two halves last time, you know, what do y'all have to do to try to, you know, make sure y'all could, you know, go go with them for the whole distance here. And, and how well are they playing lately? And uh, was that more Detroit last week, the 47-7? to seven? You know, we talked about a D-led, you know, this week. And we came out, we talked about the keys to winning this football game. Mm-hmm. And on offense, we talked about our third down finish coming out in the second half. Wasn't, wasn't what it wanted to be. They were able to get stops on third down. Some of them were particularly too long, third and long, extra long, matter of fact. And we got to win and move the chains in order to be able to win the game on offense. And on defense, we had a couple busts in the secondary, if you remember. Yeah. And I really blame that on focus and finish. We got to go out there and we got to focus throughout the game to get the stuff executed that we know we're going to execute it. And a lot of people would have made the excuse on who was in the game and why they were in the game. And we don't do that. We expect our guys to be able to go out there and execute no matter who they are. And when they're called upon and we were not able to do that last time as far as the finish. And those are the things that should separate this this game and the last game. I know we like to use the term tail of two halves, but it's really playing the whole 60 minutes. It's really focusing on those 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 three second snaps, those three second moments and taking that all the way through no matter how long it takes. Great. Will, do you have any follow ups? Nope, I'm good. Thank you, Gabby. Thanks, Coach. Jason. Oh, all right. Great. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Sarah. Hold on. Sarah Walsh from Sarah. Sarah. Hey, Raheem, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Sarah. How are you doing? Hey, hi, Raheem. Sorry about that. You were out the door and then like I reeled you back in for one last question. My no, my you're right. I mean, um, really, I really should have um, with this season, as weird as it's been in so many ways for so many people. Um, and, and for your organization in many ways different from others with changes on the staff, um, the last game of the year is always a, a weird one, right, with change looming um, for, for players, for coaches, for everyone, um, especially when you know that there's nothing happening at the end of those quarters. So I'm just curious. I know you're a motivating guy. What's your kind of like final message when you guys are in Tampa Sunday and this team goes out there to play its last four quarters? You know, Sarah, uh, for us, it's always a mentality. And when you get an opportunity to play this game, how fortunate we all are, you can't wait to go out there. No matter whether it's the first, whether it's the last, whether it's the last time we're all going to be together, you always know at the end of every single season, the next season is going to be different. So you shouldn't like look at it any differently than, than, you would norm- than you normally look at it. And when these guys go out there to play with each other, they play for each other. They play together with each other. They love it. Um, this game is great to us. It has been great to us all. And we just got to look at it that way and go out there and play it with the mentality that we're going out there to play this game to win. And, and Sarah, I'm glad you did call me back because this may be the last press conference that we have this year in this format with you guys. And it gives me the ability to thank everybody on this call, um, how generous and how honest you guys have been all year um, and how, how frank we've been with each other. And I really appreciate, um, you know, the fair reporting and the fair uh, everything that we've done together. And I appreciate you guys for that.